This is the Greater Bay Area Open Show, and myself and Jeff Owen are the founders. This is a, an open jury show that is run by the Los Gatos Art Association, and it's been running now for, um, since 2015, we do it every other year, and um, we've been luck, fortunate enough to partner with uh, New Mew, so we've always had a space here which is fabulous. So um, it's such a nice thing. It's such a beautiful museum, and it's so wonderful to see that the folks here see the value in promoting the local art association and supporting the local work. So um, this show, um, we had um, 429 entries for this show, so it was quite large. It was called down to 169. And uh, so, and we had a few repeats from previous shows. Uh, the challenge is always to come up with a, a title that will inspire the artist to produce something special for the show. This year we decided on potentiality, actuality. Um, <clears throat> the key is always to find something that is broad enough that the artist can find meaning in it somehow, because it's all about how they subjectively see the title. And so this title, was all about addressing the potentiality that becomes actuality as the artists produce their work, so their vision becomes something tangible, and it can go the other way around too in the interpretation of the things that are actual and how they can be translated into something that can have much greater meaning. So, um, so we thought that would be an interesting challenge for the artist to look at, so that was the, the goal. So, um, the Los Gatos Art Association is a local group. We meet at the Shir Hadash uh, congregation once a month. We have demonstrations. It's open to the public if you ever want to come and see. Um, it's usually the third Sunday of the month. And uh, so you're, wel you're welcome to come anytime it's open to everyone. So, um, and the group has been uh, here in Los Gatos since uh, for 75 years. So we had at the reception, we had a large 75 balloons just to mark the occasion. So it's been a, a local group that's been around a long time. We have about 140 artists that belong to the group. So, and it's all very level. So, but it's, uh, it's a really, um, it's a very friendly group. So if you're ever looking for something to do on a Sunday, come and join us. So let's start with the show. Um, we, we had a lot of fun putting this one up. It was, um, a beautiful sort of variety of pieces. Um, we have six categories. Um, those are oils, watercolor, acrylics, um, mixed media, and sculpture. And this year, we, oh, I should mention, we had two jurors, and uh, Pancho Jimenez, who's a professor at uh, Santa Clara U, and um, our uh, curator here, Allison, uh, and she is uh, she is a photographer by background, and um, and her last name. Uh, Rallo. Yes. Rallo. I didn't want to say wrong. Yeah, uh, that's right. So um, she is a she has photography in her background. Pancho Jimenez has sculpture, and it's so interesting to watch how the specialties of the jurors influence the choice of what comes in. This year we had more sculptures than ever, so it was kind of interesting. And we had a good number of photography pieces, which often do not get that much attention in shows, which, you know, I, I think photography is fantastic. I'm happy to see more of it. So they did a beautiful job in partnering, and we were very grateful to have them. So, so um, let's start. Um, I will take you through. Let's start in the corner here with the first piece. This is an artist named Nancy Takaichi. She's a plein air artist. That means she takes all her supplies, works out the field, and just draws what she sees. And um, and she's she's very prolific. She's had lots of pieces. She's a member of the club as well. And um, she was kind enough when I asked her about this piece. She said it's from a diner in uh, locally. Does anybody have any idea where that might be? When I say locally, I mean a broader local. No, it's it's actually in Scotts Valley. So um, so this is a diner. She was kind enough to send me a photo of her original work. So this was the draft that she made when she was out in the field. So she just sketched it quickly. We can see a lot more detail came in later. The detail of the people is completely not clear, but um, it was done very fast. 
The name of the, the um, diner is Drew's Tacos, and in the final version, she changed it to Joe's Tacos because that's her husband's name. So that artistic license, and some of the people in here are members of her family, so. <laughs> but it's a beautiful piece, so we're quite happy to have it, and she took the prize at our local mention, so. Um, so I wanted to point out this shovel piece, which had us wondering what was going on. What was the artist thinking to put a rope instead of a handle and make it two ended? So, and I don't have an answer. <laughs> so, but it was just such an unusual piece, and when it came in, it didn't have a stand. So we were left wondering how are we supposed to display this piece? So um, the artist came in, I mean, we called him up and said, um, we really love this piece, but we don't know how to present this. And so he said, right away, don't worry, I have a stand, so they brought it down. So this is a, a person I'm going to have to call for coffee to find out what he was thinking to do this double, double-ended shovel. It's fascinating. So. All right, well, let's take a look down here. Um, we've got a Charlie piece. Um, this is Jane Lewis. Uh, she's also the president of the Lewis Cutler Association and um, a very good photographer. She, she does beautiful landscapes. So, and she loves photographing spots on the coast um, so this is Silomar Beach, and <coughs> the title is the Silomar's Beach Birthday Wish, and I believe that relates to the fact that she really wants to live there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she's been hovering around Carmel for a long time trying to discover where, where she wants to be. So um, she wants to be on the coast. So um, let me think what else. I have got, oh, behind you here, this painting. Now, this is called yeah, Cheshire the Thumb. So, the artist, um, Suzanne Levy, she, um, what she wanted to do with this piece was indicate the challenges that women have in society, how there is so much that they have to endure that it clouds their ability to be themselves. And so, and it very much speaks to another painting that's quite famous. Um, can it, does anybody know which one I'm talking about? Do you remember the man in the bowl or half of the apple in front of his face? That's Rene Magritte, and it's called Son of Man. Very similar topic. Um, in his case, there were still parts of the man, you could just basically see one eye behind the apple, but you could, it was very much obscured. And the artist was trying to say that people become invisible as they try to conform to society's standards. And this is another part of her message as well. So I thought it was, it was the first thing I thought when I saw it, it was just very well done. And her colors, she chose the colors to match the drama, the, the basically passion, blood, uh, the, the struggle of trying to get to a place that's brighter. So very interesting piece. This next piece, so it took two prizes, is a street scene in Manhattan scene, 1950s. Um, the artist is uh, Michael Welch, and um, it almost has like a kind of an Art Deco feel to it a little bit. So just a very, um, very clear timepiece, so that when you look at this, you immediately sense that it's sometime long ago from the clothing, and the colors are very simplified, but, um, it's just a, a really beautiful scattering and um, wonderful shot of the group. So um, this piece took the first prize in acrylic and also received one of the sponsor prizes. We um, have sponsors that we bring in for these shows and uh, they basically uh, are allowed to choose a piece in the show and they, the award that they give is named by the sponsor. So, and that makes it a lot of fun because the pieces that come in, they're all juried already by the jurors. So the sponsors don't need to worry about choosing a piece that is not the right piece. So we just say, you know, this is where you just go with your feelings. So this one immediately got snapped up by one of the sponsors. So um, it's a wonderful piece. So down here, we have Brian Harrington. He is the only artist in the group that managed to get two pieces in. Uh, normally, we, we try to make sure that it's just one for each artist because we love to make sure that the artists get as much chance for exposure as possible. So, 
Um, but in this case, it was a pairing. They went together very well. Ryan, um, Ryan was also in our show a couple of years, four years ago, um, and his piece was a uh, wooden pie that was carved, and it had a lattice cover on it, and he had actually built his own little mini picnic table kind of thing sat on. And, um, and so when you opened the lid of the pie, there were all these ties inside, so um, it was just a very creative piece. It, it, it was, people were just fascinated, what does this mean? And it was, I believe the title was Grandpa's Ties, something like that. Um, I should have looked that up. But it was, anyway, it was full of ties. So it was, it, it was very unexpected, and it was just beautifully done. So he likes to work with wood. You can see it's a very fine job on the, on the woodwork as well. So. 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 Can you tell us about this art? Pardon me? Can you tell us anything about this? I, this is, um, this was, what I can say about this one is the two jurors immediately logged on this one quickly. Oh. So, um, oh, how appropriate that then the name was. Yes. Um, yes, it is a very unique piece. Um, other than what is, what these statements below were given by the artists. So, in, a, in an attempt to allow the viewers to understand better what they were thinking. So, um, yes, I don't know more than what's on the, the label. So, um, but I think that this looks to me at, like an example of an artist who's really trying to do something unique with the theme of the show. So, um, so we really appreciated the effort when we saw that one. It was, it's quite striking. Over here, um, we have another local artist over here. His name is Ed Lucy. He does these very idyllic looking landscapes and is known for his purple colors. Um, he just uh, always seems to find a way to put purple in the shadows, which is just beautiful. It makes it very soft, almost nostalgic looking. Um, and um, so he often paints plein air as well, outdoors. Um, so, and over the years, I mean, I have one of his pieces too, and I just love his work. Um, I wanted to point out Susan Butler Graham, she took on um, mention for her watercolor. She's got a very uh, different style. It's quite light and yet just intriguing in the, in the way she shapes her, her subject matter. And I realized that she's one of the few artists that came back from a previous show as well. And so what I did was look up the last one that she had submitted, which was called Dapple Rabbit. And you can see, and it actually took a prize. Very similar, very similar uh, style, and uh, just a wonderful use of watercolor. She's just got a real flair. Um, so uh, I wanted to show you that as well. So this next piece is very, very detailed. It's um, Susan Jekyll's piece. Um, if you come and take a closer look later, this would have taken a tremendous amount of hours to build the colors on this, and it's such got such clear definition. Just a beautiful piece. So, and she goes into the second place. So, so now over here, I wanted to point it out. We've got um, one of our favorite people at New New, Marie Cameron. She, um, she was working on a series during COVID where she took old postcards and then stitched them with silk thread and often did things like place patterns of rainbows in them or something and it gave new life to old images and it was very thought provoking and so um, this piece she found an old image of a, there was a man in this image as well and she completely threaded him out. So, so it became about Apollonia, not, um, not the fellow that was in there before. So he's just covered, and she in fact, she covered the name, it was in the title, and I'm, forgive me, I have to put my glasses on the counter, I can't read the title. So, um, but that's what she decided to focus on the woman as dead, instead of make her the hero of this story, instead of being a side victim to what was going on in the image. I think she was being abducted there. So. Um, but just a beautiful piece. So is this like just Angela or just Angela? Oh, there you go. Yeah, so it was not Angela. It was Angela. We'll be glad to be here. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> 
Okay, so um, I think, let me see. I think that was what I had to tell you. So um, this was another piece that was chosen very quickly by the jurors. Very, very dark, but quite striking. You see what looks like a combination of pomegranates and organs. And uh, this is called bread soaked in mud. Um, but just a very, I mean, literally dark piece, a very dark piece, but um, also very thought provoking. So 